Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. I'm Abby, and today I'm finally getting around to doing the second evolution of the original 151 Pokemon. I'm really excited to finally be doing this because it means that I'm continuing on with the challenge that I set for myself, and I hope that I can still continue on after this project and that I won't be too disheartened by how ridiculously difficult it might be. This is my planning paper. I always have one of these. This is seriously the best way if you want to write your own patterns to kind of figure it out in your mind how you want the pattern to go. So as you can see, I have all three of them on this page and I have estimated how many pieces each one is gonna take. Charmander being the easiest He's gonna be about 10 or 11 pieces. Charmeleon is gonna be closer to 16 and then Charizard is probably going to be 50 or 60 pieces, which is a lot of pieces that I'm gonna have to make and then gonna have to sew together. It's gonna be a long road ahead. So without much further ado, let's crochet. Hello everyone. This is going to be a very long video because it took me somewhere in the neighborhood of 30 hours to complete this project. I was sort of expecting it to take somewhere between 30 to 40 hours based on what I've done previously. I will say my saving grace as to why this didn't turn out to be a 50 or 60 hour project is that I decided every time I went up an evolution, I went up a size in hook. So, because of that, the Pokemon will look a little bit more quote-unquote pixely, in my opinion, but it was way quicker to do, and I don't really feel all that bad about going up in size. I think I'm going to continue doing that because it really made it a whole lot easier for me to do the final evolution. Last time when I was doing Venusaur, it took me way too long and I really was not looking forward to that with Charizard. So I'm glad that I decided to change the size of Hook because otherwise it would have been a really long month. At this point, I actually have, for some reason or another, four concurrent projects going on. I think I tend to go into overdrive around this time of year because I wanna work on presents and projects that I started maybe a while back. I actually only have a couple of projects that I started a long time ago and never finished, but I want to finish them. Within the last month or so, I picked up my double pointed knitting needles and decided that I wanted to finish a sock that I started all the way back in high school. So that's like five years ago. The reason that I originally stopped working on that sock was because I couldn't figure out how to turn the heel. Everyone told me that turning the heel is the hardest part and I don't know if that psyched me out. I don't know what I was doing five years ago. And when I took the sock out of the container that it was sitting in, the heel looked super wrong. So I undid that whole part and restarted and it looked a whole lot better than it did before. So I'm happy to report that I ended up finishing that sock, but now, if I want a pair, I have to make another one. So that's a project. I also, for absolutely no reason, decided that I wanted to start knitting a blanket. Not sure if I am gonna finish that anytime soon, but it's one of the things that I have laying around. Again, projects that I like to start, not necessarily finish. Then I found a pattern for cat paw stockings and you just know. I couldn't pass that up. So I guess that might make me one of those cat ladies that gives their cats presents for Christmas, but I think I can own that. So at the time of me making Charmander, Charmeleon, and Charizard, the stockings were the fourth project that I had going on, but I finished those stockings around the same time as the Pokemon. I'm gonna put a link in the description for that stocking pattern in case you wanna check it out and make some of your own, but here's how mine turned out. They look a little bit different than the pattern, and that's just because I wanted them to look a little bit more like traditional stockings. So I knitted something to go around the top of it instead of putting what it has on the original pattern as a fish. I am really so excited for this holiday season, which is probably why I'm overdoing it with all of these projects. I'm planning on a few more before the next couple of months are over. So yeah, I was also hoping to start the Squirtle evolution before the end of the year too, but now I feel like I'm getting ahead of myself and I'm not sure if I'm gonna be able to hold myself to that. We 
shall see. We are fully into the holiday season now, so that means there's a lot of travel going on. I wouldn't say that I've done a lot of traveling, especially before I went to college, but I do have a couple of good stories that I wanna tell. Last year, my husband and I were traveling to my parents' house for Christmas, and we decided to take Kratos with us. I have never taken a cat with me on a plane before, so I was pretty nervous about it. To take cats on a plane, you first have to get them checked out by a vet, to get a note that's only really good for 10 days and the airline may or may not even ask for it. I'm not saying that as in like, you shouldn't get it because they might not even ask for it. I feel like you should always get it in case they do ask for it because legally you're supposed to have it or something like that. It's just annoying when you're gone for more than 10 days and you have to take a flight back. You have to go to a vet where you are and get another one because that's money, that's time. I don't know how much a cat can really go bad in 10 days if they travel. I have no idea. But while we were at our vet here, where we currently live, I was asking them what we should do to keep him calm during all this traveling. Because I know that when you take pets on a plane, you can't sedate them because that is extremely dangerous, possibly fatal, and I didn't want that to happen. So the chances of Kratos being awake and scared were pretty high. They recommended us uh, some sort of cat treat supplement that is meant for calming cats down called Composure. And they also said that we should give him a couple of them before even leaving the house. So the day of the trip comes and we give him the treats. Side note, he actually loves these things. Um, we still give them to him sometimes as treats. He loves these Composure supplements. And I've seen him gobble them down just like a normal treat. However, he does not eat them if he's too upset or scared. At this point in the trip, he ate them up totally fine. And I put him in the carrier before leaving to the airport. Kratos, probably like every cat, doesn't like to be in confined spaces for a long amount of time. So he was meowing a lot in the car and I was worried about him meowing a lot on the plane and bothering other passengers because the last thing that I want is to bother other people especially on planes, because I feel like it's way more stressful a situation being on a plane. At least for me it is. So I just really didn't want to bother anybody. A lot of people take naps on planes and how loud this cat can yell when he's upset would probably wake someone up. And I don't want to be waking up people from their naps because that makes them extra angry. At any rate, we get to the airport and the line to the check-in desk is very long. Flying has always made me really nervous and when you're cutting it close to the boarding time, my anxiety gets really high up there. And we were kind of cutting it close already to this boarding time. Luckily, the line was actually moving pretty quick, so I was still anxious, but it was at the time being handled. When we get to the desk, we dropped off our checked bag and then we had a tiny problem that we had to deal with. Apparently when we had booked the tickets, we had booked it somehow so that it thought that we were taking two cats with us on this departure flight and taking no cats back with us on the return flight, which was not at all what we were doing. We weren't trafficking cats. We uh, were taking one there and taking one back. So we had to get that fixed, which was like, you know, it's not a whole lot, but every, every little five, 10 minute thing starts to add up when you're that close to boarding time. So I was getting anxious a little bit. After she fixed it, we leave the desk and we run over to the security gate. Most airports that I have ever been to have more than one security line. And the way that they're set up that I've seen them, you have one on like either side of the airport. So the one that's closest to us is of course the one that we go for. However, as we were rushing to the line, a security guard stopped us and told us that there was a dog training to be one of those airport security dogs going through the line up there. And since we had a cat, we couldn't go through that line, so we would have to go to the far security line. So at this point, I'm also freaking out because now we kind of have to run to the other side to catch this flight. Because the last thing I want to do is miss this flight with an angry cat in a carrier. Before we run off though, the security guard gives us this voucher that basically fast passes you through the security line. So you know how there is, is this typical, the long line where everyone has to wait and then there's like the pre-check line or like the clear air line. Do you know what I'm talking about? It's people that have like memberships or paid extra or something 
go through that pre-check line. Yeah, we were allowed to go through that pre-check line with that voucher because of the whole dog thing. So we slip past most of the line and go straight up to that next checkpoint, the metal detectors things. Like I said, I have never taken a cat on a plane before and clearly he does not go on that little x-ray conveyor belt thing. So I'm just standing there a little bit confused holding my cat and someone comes over and tells me, so you have to take him out of the carrier and hold him and walk him through the metal detector while the carrier gets put through the x-ray machine, which makes sense. But now I'm nervous because I have to hold a cat and walk through a metal detector and he doesn't even have like a harness or anything. So here I am in this busy airport during the holiday season, holding a cat with 18 claws deployed in my arms. So that was painful, but he didn't even really struggle that much. I think it was because he mostly froze. There was actually a lady in the line next to me who was also holding a cat, and we shared a very short conversation and a few laughs about how crazy it is to travel with cats, because it really is. I feel like it's definitely different than traveling with a dog or a kid. I'm not going to equate kids to animals, but sometimes, oh man, I have babysat some kids. <laughs> I mean, because with dogs, it's easier to control them, in my opinion, than it is to control a cat. Cause I've never traveled with a dog either. So I don't know if they like let you walk them through the metal detector or whatever. But most of the time I've seen dogs in the airport, they aren't in the kennel yet. So I don't know if that's just something that I haven't seen, but with a cat, they have to be in their carrier at all times, everywhere they go in this airport, which makes sense, but it's also difficult to deal with. I don't know. I don't know if that makes sense. I don't know what I'm complaining about, but anyway, after all those security checks, we get over to the gate and make it in time for boarding. The way that we had bought the ticket, Kratos actually would go under the seat space in front of us and i was really nervous about that because he is a pretty big cat he wasn't completely full grown at this point because he was only about four or five months but if i had to do it now he'd probably have to go in the cargo hold or something because he is way too big for the space in front i i can barely fit my backpack in the space in front of me sometimes and i don't know maybe i just really don't know how to pack things, but that's that's a problem that I have. I don't know, I was just worried about it because he was gonna be stuck underneath the seat for this two to three hour flight. And I don't think he had ever been at that point contained for that amount of time in that small of a space. So I was really worried about it. And you know, not too long in, he's meowing all sad, but overall it's not really loud comparatively to the engine noise. And I found out pretty quick that the more you paid attention to him, the more he seemed to want out and to be anxious. So you couldn't unzip the top to pet him to try to calm him down, or he would try to stick his face out of the carrier to get out of the carrier. And unlike dogs, because I've seen people do this with small dogs for sure on planes, you can't have them out of the carrier on your lap or anything. So he had to stay in the carrier and he wasn't very happy about that. But after the flight, when we got in another car to get to my parents' house, I unzipped the carrier. So I think he felt better about that. Unfortunately for him though, there was a return flight. So at my parents' house, my dad suggested that we wait to give him those composure supplements until we get to the airport. So that way it wouldn't wear off before we actually got on the plane because we were leaving kind of early to get to this flight. So we wouldn't have to rush like last time. I agreed that that would probably be the best thing because I didn't want the composure to wear off before we even got on the plane. I ended up giving him a composure in the carrier about an hour in, but like I said, when he's upset or anxious, he doesn't want to eat anything. So he didn't eat it in the car. We get to the airport and there's time for us to have some food before the flight. So we go over and eat and I look in the carrier to see if he's eaten it yet. Nope, we go through the security line, didn't eat him. We waited at the gate, still weren't eaten. We get onto the plane, hadn't touched it. So now I'm feeling like we have a problem. We had a cat on a plane without anything in his system 
to calm him down. This caused him to be around 10 times worse than the first flight. He was meowing, he was scratching the carrier, and it just kind of seemed like he was having some kind of breakdown. And I felt really, really bad for causing that by not giving him something beforehand where he would feel more calm. But this was loud meowing at this point. Like not just the quieter meows that you could barely hear over the engine. It was pretty much just yowling. So very loud and I was very worried that it was gonna bother passengers. So that flight on the way back was a lot more stressful. I couldn't sleep at all and I typically sleep on flights but I couldn't sleep at all. And yeah, by the time we got out to the car, I opened up the carrier again and he was feeling better at that point. So now we know we have to give him the supplements long before we leave in order to keep him calm. My second travel story involves planes, trains, and automobiles. So pretty much every mode of transportation. Back during my first year of college, my sister Jen and I decided that we wanted to surprise our younger sister by returning home for her birthday. So this isn't one of those holiday travel stories, but I think it's still one of my favorite travel stories. We bought tickets for an evening flight so that we could continue to go to class and work the same day so we wouldn't miss as much when we were on this mini vacation. My sister Jen has flown a lot more than me. At this point in time, I had only flown once before. The way that I am, I like to try to pack as early as possible. Like if I could pack a week in advance, I would. But my sister is not like that. She would rather pack everything the night before and it makes me crazy, but I still love her, so it's fine. That just kind of illustrates a little bit on how traveling is different between us. I'm a very anxious traveler, and in my opinion, she is more of a laid back traveler. I don't know if she'd agree with me on that, but that is definitely how I see it. So the day of our flight comes, and we are both at work. We actually, at the time, had the same job, so it was pretty easy for us to sync up hours. I'm pretty sure during that whole day, I kept asking her at work when we should leave, and she kept telling me, oh, later, it's fine. We'll go later, it's fine. Just don't freak out, we're gonna make it. We can stay here for half an hour longer, that kind of thing. And I'm probably the most annoying person in the world when I have anxiety because I just keep asking questions like that. So I probably annoyed her to the point where we decided to just leave and to go home to grab our luggage. And my roommate was nice enough to drive us to the train station. I had only been on this train once before as well, and I did not realize how long it typically takes a train to get up to the airport from where I was living. Now I know that you should probably have a two hour block set aside for just traveling on this train because it stops all the time, it's really slow. And honestly, if you were driving a car, it would only take you about an hour to get to this airport. But yeah, by train it takes like two, if not more. So we make it on the train and everything's fine, except at some point there is this massive holdup that kind of stops the train in its tracks and we barely move for like 20 minutes or something. So at this point, my anxiety is going pretty high rate. And again, I'm being annoying towards my sister about it because there's nothing we can do at this point. We're getting pretty close to the boarding time. So when the train comes into the station at the airport, we rush over to those check-in kiosks. As we're trying to print our boarding passes, the kiosk is saying that we need to talk to somebody at the courtesy desk. There were no lines, so we were able to go right up to the front and ask them what was wrong. That's when they told us that since we hadn't checked in online and we didn't get there early enough, we were too close to the boarding time to get on the plane and we wouldn't be allowed to board it. So at this point, all of my traveling fears were realized. We had actually gotten travel insurance on these tickets, but as it turns out, travel insurance doesn't really work if you miss your flight unless there are extenuating circumstances like death and that's pretty much it. So that doesn't include getting on a train that took too long. So this falls under our fault and travel insurance wasn't gonna pay us anything or refund our tickets or anything. The travel agent at the desk told us that the best we could do was pay a transfer fee to get on the next available flight. And since it was already an evening flight that we missed, the next flight, I think it was somewhere around five or six in the morning, we called our dad who was supposed to come and pick us up at the airport and told him what was happening. And he was really upset about the situation. We were really upset about the situation. We couldn't do anything about it. And because of all the upsetness that was happening, our sister found out that we were supposed to come and that we were coming the next day. So 
it ruined the whole birthday surprise. So at this point, I'm so upset from all the traveling and the missing of flights that I don't want to go home just to turn around to come back for a really early flight. And we also didn't want to impose on our roommate having to get up and drive us that early because I don't think the trains would operate early enough for us to get back to the airport that way. So we buy some snacks, we head up the stairs and just decide that we're gonna camp out by an outlet the whole night long. So I get my laptop out, we watch a Bollywood movie that's three hours long, and at that point we're feeling tired and we fall asleep on the airport floor. And it's not even a carpeted floor, it's one of those hard floors. I have things tied to me so that no one steals anything while we're asleep. People keep walking by looking at us like we're homeless children. It was really weird. <laughs> yeah, we woke up the next morning and we were laughing about it because it was so ridiculous at that point. But anyway, we made it on the next flight and everything turned out fine. My sister was happy that we made it, even though it wasn't a surprise anymore. But oh well, it was fun either way. Those are my travel stories, so I hope they were interesting enough to get you through all of this crochet footage because, oh my gosh, there's so much footage. I actually decided to leave my pocket watch in the screen so that you could kind of see how long it takes me to make something. So you can also see that I'm not joking when I say how long something takes. Actually, when I do a lot of crocheting, I tend to get a blister on my finger and I think that's just the way that I hold the hook. And so you'll see tape around my finger at a couple of points and then there's this sort of gray thing on my finger and that's just something I sewed together to keep my finger protected from blistering. So if you were wondering why I'm doing that, that's why. Like I said before, I'm hoping to get the next evolution out within the next couple of months. This whole process actually takes about a month when it comes to planning, crocheting, and editing. It all culminates into a month long process. So I apologize for the long wait times. I know a few people have been asking me where my next video is and you know, especially since I decided to crochet three things for one video, it's gonna take longer. And I could go back to the one thing per video, but I just think that this makes a lot more sense. Anyway, I think that's enough rambling for me. So let's get into those glam shots. Are you ready? Are you ready for this? Yeah, you probably are because you already saw them. It's one thing to see it when I have it in the glam shots and it's another to see it compared to my face. This guy is way bigger than I had intended him to be, but at the same time, he looks pretty legit, so that's okay with me. I kind of did make Charmeleon a little bit like fatter than I intended to make him. Charmander turned out very cute. I'm extremely happy with how he turned out, and I could see myself making more than one of these little guys. He might actually be my favorite of the three. What's funny is it's always like a tie between the first evolution and the last evolution, and I don't really care much for the middle evolution. It kind of just reminds me of how the middle evolution is like a middle child, which is totally me, so I get it, but I mean, I don't hate him. I just like the other two better. <laughs> this was an incredibly intense project. I spent a long time on it. I'm sure when I edit this together, I can tell you exactly how long that I took on it. It was in the realm of 30 hours or something like that. Thank you for being patient with me and for waiting for this kind of thing. If I'm to do this again, of course, it is going to continue to be a more monthly thing. But anyway, I am so excited to be done with this project and to move on to the next one. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll see you in my next video. Bye. Kratos, can you not? Hey. Good night! <laughs> You're not snuggling with me. That's I not am. How, this works. how are we gonna protect ourselves? Jen, I swear if someone steals my flipping computer. <laughs> this is why, okay? This is why you leave the house with like five hours in advance. <laughs>
Otherwise, you because spend 12 hours like it's dirty better just airport to floor. <laughs> just so you know. <laughs> Good night, airport. <laughs>